Welcome to worship here at Grace Lutheran and Providence Valley Lutheran Churches in Dawson, Minnesota. We're so thankful that you are able to uh, log on to our services and join us in this hour of uh, learning our, our walk with Christ. We're uh, uh, thankful that we're able to um, be on the radio. Today's uh, radio broadcast is given in honor of uh, Pastor Johanna Buchholz and her family uh, for the past year that she spent with us today is our farewell to her. She's been uh, with us this past year on her internship uh, experience, uh, on her uh, way of uh, um, uh, becoming a, a called and ordained pastor in the Lutheran Church, in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And so this is the culmination of her internship year. Uh, uh, pastor Johanna and her family will be moving to Nebraska uh, to await a call. So we're just delighted and, and thankful that uh, we were able to share with her this, this, uh, this past year, and we'll have an opportunity to say goodbye to her later on in the service. I want to thank all of the people this past week who helped out with uh, our outdoor vacation Bible school. We had uh, close to 35 uh, kids, 30 to 35 kids, uh, that were um, with us, and, and uh, we even, we, we, I want to introduce you to Flash. Flash even uh, joined us, and so, well, thank you, thank you, Flash. Uh, Flash is kind of cuddly in this uh, COVID time. Uh, so, Flash, uh, uh, did you have a good time at Outdoor VBS at Grace and Providence? All right. Uh, I bet you you're really going to miss the kids, aren't you? Well, speaking of the kids, we're going to go outside right now, and we're going to get a little greeting from, would you like to go outside with us? And we'll get a little greeting, and, and maybe we can sing a song with them and uh, uh, show our friends uh, online and on the radio what we've been uh, doing uh, the past uh, three days outside for our outdoor, outdoor uh, VBS. So are you ready? Okay, I'm going to walk, but you go ahead and fly, all right? Okay, here we go. Say, Say hi, Flash. Let's see how we can jump. Now sing loud, okay? Here we go. Can you feel the joy? Gonna make you wanna 
Okay, wasn't, wasn't that fun? Hey, Flash, did you have a good time with the kids? Yeah, we're going to miss them, but we'll, uh, we'll get together again here real soon. So uh, thank you, Flash, for your work with our kids, and, and thank you, uh, Grace and Providence, for supporting our ministry so we can do these great things uh, with our, our youngest people in our uh, church and in our community. We really appreciate the opportunity to spend time, time together. So, and, and you know what, Flash? I got, I got some good news. I've got a few more announcements to make. Uh, this Wednesday, do you golf, by the way? Do you, go, do you golf? Would you like to learn to golf? We're going to have our golf tournament on Wednesday, uh, our four-mission golf tournament, uh, and we're going to have that at the Dawson Golf Course. Uh, so you can come out and join us if you'd like to. You could probably swing a, a mean driver on, on the course. Yeah, there you go. All right. So, uh, yeah, so come on out. Get your teams of four, and uh, we're going to have our four-mission uh, golf tournament at Grace this Wednesday. We'll start with a meal at 530, and then uh, we'll continue uh, with our best ball tournament at uh, uh, 6 o'clock. Flash, come back here. Flash, come back here. I got some more. I got some more great news. Henry Andrew Pete was born uh, this past week to David and Carly Pete. That's uh, uh, the son of Woody and Diane Pete. So they had a beautiful baby boy born to them. So we just give thanks to God for that. Oh, hey, and I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I got more good news. Justin and Carly Wager had a baby boy born this past week as well. And we're so thankful for health and we pray for growth. Ames. Stephen Wager was born this past week, and that's John and Tammy Wager's uh, son, Justin, and his wife, Carly Wager. So we just celebrate with these families uh, for all of these uh, good gifts, and we pray for health and for healing and uh, for growth in the coming days. So thanks, thanks, Flash, for helping me make the announcements. Uh, uh, we want to say goodbye to everybody online and on our radio. Okay, goodbye, Flash. We'll see you later.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Now, trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. And beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Your sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. God of all peoples, Your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. I'm Scott Buholtz, the husband of intern pastor Johanna Buholtz. Our first reading comes from the 56th chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 and 6 through 8. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath, and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the 67th Psalm, verses 1 through 7. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon the earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then he called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? 
He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes into the mouth, what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace and peace to you from the one who is who was and who is to come. I am not very good at endings. I was reminded of this recently as I packed up multiple boxes of scrapbooking supplies and projects, uh, many of which I started years ago and have yet to finish. And again, when I finished a good series on Netflix and I became genuinely sad, I just wasn't ready for the story to be over. And again, when every sermon I have preached this past year needs to come to an end, preferably around the 8 to 12 minute mark, but I can't figure out how to do it. There's so much more that needs to be said. So I throw out an amen or thanks be to God, and I call it good enough. So it should come as no surprise to me or to you, that as I come to the end of my internship with Grace and Providence Valley Lutheran Churches, as I prepare to depart Dawson, that my emotions are high and the tears have come freely this week. I'm just not that good at endings. It's not that I lack excitement for what's to come. It's quite the opposite, actually. I am so excited to continue on my journey to ordained ministry and I anticipate with joy all the wonderful ways that God will continue to work in and through these two congregations here in Dawson. So no, my inability to bring things to an end, I think, has more to do with the impossibility of wrapping up something so immense, so meaningful, in one package with a tidy bow. In the case of my internship here with you, how can I possibly express all of my gratitude in one farewell? The challenge of saying goodbye is made even more so at this time because the usual handshakes and hugs are off the table and the in-person visits that I would have made have been limited. So if you are hearing this today, I am so incredibly grateful that God brought me and my family here to Dawson. I am so incredibly grateful to have had the opportunity to work with this amazing staff. I am so incredibly grateful to have shared this year with you, the members and friends of Grace Lutheran and Providence Valley Lutheran Churches here in Dawson. Yes, I am grateful. Even though I did not have a typical internship. Even though I didn't get to experience a first 
communion class here, or in-person Holy Week services, or a Dawson Boyd baccalaureate, even though I didn't get to have all the lunches that I would have had with you, and even though my visits to the care center were cut short, even though I missed out on Riverfest and the many conversations that happen as I'm out and about in the community, this internship year has been rich for me. I have learned and experienced so many things that I may not have had the opportunity to experience in a typical internship year. Things like preaching to a live audience and preaching to a camera are two very different things. Things like a sense of community can be fostered even over physical distance. There is a time and place for toilet paper to appear in sermons. That worship and ministry happen anywhere, everywhere, and they are not bound by buildings. That sometimes it's okay to wear pajamas to church. And that God's love and mercy continue to come to us in surprising and beautiful ways. And that these two congregations respond faithfully to their call to form leaders for the church, even if they don't get to keep them. And so, I give thanks. I give thanks for the gifts of these congregations. I give thanks for this place. I give thanks for you. I give thanks that you have persevered with me through this unprecedented time. I give thanks for your support, for your words of encouragement, for your continuing to walk with me as I do with you. And though we are no means done, I mean, through with this pandemic yet, I depart Dawson, assured of the promise that God is present and God is at work in each one of us, no matter where we are. Speaking of God present and at work in each of us, how about our gospel story for today? Like, did I say I'm not very good at endings? I might as well add that I'm not so good at transitions either. In our story today from the Gospel of Matthew, a Canaanite woman approaches Jesus and begs for mercy because her daughter is afflicted with a demon. In other words, her daughter has a debilitating illness. Now everything about this scene is culturally and socially wrong. She's a woman approaching Jesus and his disciples who are all men. She's a Canaanite begging a Jew. And she's shouting instead of asking politely. How annoying. Is it really any surprise that the disciples say, Jesus, send her away? Is it really a surprise that Jesus enacts and voices what's in the disciples' hearts? Jesus first ignores the woman and then says, I've come only for the lost sheep of Israel. And then, it is not fair for the food of children to be given to dogs. Okay, so I admit, it is surprising to me that Jesus would ignore anyone or insult them by calling them a dog. That doesn't seem like the Jesus of love that I know, the one that I preach daily. But like I said, I believe what's happening here is Jesus is enacting and voicing what he sees coming out of the disciples' hearts. He has, after all, just told them prior to this portion of the gospel story that it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles, but what comes out of the heart. So here is record of the experiential part of Jesus' teaching. Jesus gives the disciples the opportunity to be the hero of the story, to speak up, to act in love. But they do not take that opportunity. They don't step up. Like in most of Matthew's gospel, they don't even get it. They neglect 
to use the power that God has given them. Instead, the superhero of the story becomes the unnamed Canaanite woman. Jesus lifts her up as the one of great faith. Her perseverance, her insistence that her daughter be healed, and her trust that Jesus can do it, these are the things that indicate that this woman has great faith. And Jesus makes that known to all who listen and read that story. Now this past week, I was privileged to be part of our Superhero Central Outdoor VBS here at Grace. 26 kids and numerous volunteers gathered for an hour and a half on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evening to play games, to make crafts, to sing songs, and to learn what it means to be a hero. Now in story time, the kids heard about people in the Bible who did super things that honored God. And they learned that they too can be heroes. They learned that heroes have heart, Heroes have wisdom, and heroes have courage. If you participated in VBS this week, do that with me, right? Heroes have heart, heroes have wisdom, and heroes have courage. Now, when I asked some of the kids what superheroes they have, they told me they could run super fast or hold their breath underwater for a super long time. And let me tell you, There are some super kids here in Dawson. They also told me they have the power to be super kind and to help others and to keep trying to be, to do good, even when it's hard to do so. And we named that as perseverance, right? To keep at something, even when it's difficult to do so. I see perseverance in the unnamed Canaanite woman in today's gospel story. I see a woman who has lived with her daughter's debilitating illness for years and yearns for her to be made well. I see a woman who trusts that Jesus is the one who can make her well. And I see a woman who crosses multiple cultural and social borders to make her case known. Now, I came across an image this week that I think captures this perseverance so well. Pastor and artist Allie Barrett painted this image, and she posted it on her blog in 2017. For those listening on the radio, I'll do my best to describe it to you. On the left side of the image are two disciples and Jesus. Reverend Allie points out that they are each standing independently, and Jesus' back is toward the viewer. Now, on the right side of the painting, a grandmother stands with her arms wrapped around two older children, while a young girl sits on the ground with her arms curled around a dog. And between these two groups of people is the Canaanite woman, one hand firmly grasping Jesus' arm and the other one pointing to the girl on the ground. She is looking fiercely into the eyes of Jesus. And what struck me about how well Reverend Ali captured the perseverance of the Canaanite woman, right? Her body brings, bridges together these two sides of the pictures, her her grasp on Jesus' arm and her determined look It demands attention. She has already persevered through much, and she will continue to do so until all is made well. The Canaanite woman's perseverance is not like that of a child, whose persistence is often more self-serving. If you've ever spent time with a strong-willed preschooler or toddler, or really any stubborn person for that matter, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's a wonderful trait, I'm told, for when they're older. But the Canaanite woman was not seeking her own way. 
nor was she thinking that she could get there all by herself. If only she worked hard enough. No, the Canaanite woman was advocating on behalf of her daughter. And she trusted that Jesus was the one who could make her well. And this variety of perseverance, of persistence for the well-being of others, and trusting that Jesus is the one to respond, this is the kind of perseverance that Jesus names great faith. I wonder when we, the church, have been like the disciples in this story. I wonder when we've come across someone begging to be heard and thought, we can't be bothered now. I wonder when we've encountered someone different and said, well, we only take care of people who look and act like us. I wonder when we've been asked to do something to help others and responded with, well, if we help you, then there's less for us. I mean, that is our sinful nature, right? To ignore or to send away when people are different or difficult. We forget sometimes the power that Jesus has given us as disciples of Jesus. We forget that we have been given hearts and we've been given wisdom and we've been given courage all of these things to be used to make all things well. Certainly there are times that we remember. There are times that we hear the cries of the sick and the lonely and we are moved to share our hearts. Right? There are times that we see so clearly the need of our neighbors and we are moved to gather food and supplies to distribute with wisdom. And there are times that we feel the tug of those who have experienced injustice and we are moved to raise our voice with courage. I've witnessed you do all of these things and more. Well, I've been here in Dawson. I've come to know you as people of perseverance, people who both persist and respond to others in their needs, people who trust that God will provide. I mean, how else do you get through the long, cold winters? So I'm asking you today, people of God, to consider anew who is grabbing your arm today? Right? Who is tugging at your heart? Who is demanding that you pay attention who is coming to us, the body of Christ, with the hope, with the expectation that we would draw from the heart and the wisdom and the courage that God has given us and work to make all things well? Maybe it's those who are suffering from COVID-19. They are pleading with us that this virus is serious and telling us we need to care for one another in the best ways we know how in order to stop the spread of this virus. Maybe it's those who are feeling depression related to loneliness and isolation. They are crying out to be seen and asking us to find ways to connect with them, even over the physical distance. And maybe it's those who have long experienced racial injustice. They are shouting at us that they are afraid for their lives. We need to listen to them and work for justice for all. Maybe it's those who worry about losing their life because of the work they do, because of their occupation. They are breaking open their hearts before us, and we need to work together to create communities where every person is valued and feels safe. Maybe it's the residents of southeastern Iowa who lost so much this week in the hurricane-like storm. They are begging, begging for someone to pay attention. We need to respond with supplies and financial assistance and hands and feet if we can, so that they can get back on their feet. These are a few of the people who have been tugging at my heart lately, demanding my attention, that I turn toward them, that I use the power that God has given me 
to lift them up as heroes? So who? Who has been tugging at your heart? How might you wisely use the power that God has given you? How might you courageously lift up someone else as a hero? How is God calling you to persevere, to put your faith, your great faith, into motion? I'm not going to answer those questions for you today. I'm just going to let them linger. Oh, and I'm realizing now that that's a really awkward ending to a sermon, so I should probably think of another way to wrap this up. Um, I don't really have a zinger. So um, I told you, right, that I'm not very good at endings. So, um, amen. It's not quite right. Um, thanks be to God. So it's still not right. Um, the end? No, it doesn't work. Um, how about, um, I'll go with, uh, to be continued. To be continued. Yes, that sounds right. To be continued. And in the meantime, God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you and your perseverance with favor. And may God give you peace. Amen. Church and Luther Seminary, welcome to our June 2020 commencement. Uh, this graduating class of one is, is the smallest ever at Luther Seminary and Grace Lutheran Church. So give them a well-deserved round of applause.
everyone listening today. You may be experiencing the end of one thing. You may be in transition. But this is not goodbye. God has been with us. God is with us. And God will continue to be with us. This is God continuing to love the world. This is God continuing to love you. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And then if you join with me in the prayers of the church. We pray for the Christian church around the world, for humility, where the church is dominant. We pray for courage, where it is oppressed. We pray for faithfulness when it cannot assemble together for worship. And we pray for your bountiful earth, most gracious God, for cleaner air, for the fields on which our food grows, and for the renewal of lands and waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the nations of the earth, for the peaceful resolution of disputes around the world. We pray for just policies that care for the poor and the oppressed. And we pray for the upcoming political conventions in our land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all in need of healing for the residents of Beirut and other distressed cities, for those suffering from hurricane damage, for those sick and dying of COVID-19, for the unemployed, for people without medical care, for medical workers and researchers. O Christ, our Lord, as the Canaanite woman brought her daughter's need to you, overcoming stigma and rejection to do so, confident of your healing in her life, we bring the needs of others in our prayers as well, remembering uh, before you these names in and of our community, Butch Anderson, Jim Anderson, Sarah Anderson, Olivia Baldwin, Tom Beals, Todd and Arliss Buer, Gloria Berg, Ken Club, Jack Flayton, Carol Fleeharty, Wilton and Madeline Gustafson, Monica Kennedy, Charla Kruger, John Lund, Evelyn Lundgren, Brad Madsen, Julie Miron, Jeff Moe, Jeannie Peterson, Christy Peterson Thomas, Pat Saltness, Mike Stungland, Lauren Thone, Joanne Trader, Larry Trader, Donna Wiedenbach, Bonnie Westfield, David Tollockson, Amos Wager, and Henry Pete. We pray that uh, you would uh, bless them and those that we name also in the silence of our hearts. And also for those whom pain is a constant companion, for those who daily live with chronic illness or ill health, for those who struggle with confusion and distress of mental illness, for those who care for and treat people who are ill and sometimes have agonizing decisions to face, those for whom treatment is not available or affordable, and for ourselves in our own weakness. To all your children everywhere, Lord Jesus Christ, bring healing and bring peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And you call us into the communities of grace and providence here in this place, and you have brought our intern pastor 
Johanna to us in this time, and you have blessed our time together this past year and used her ministry and learning to help us and to guide her. So for this, we give you our thanks. And we, though many, are one in Christ, and we remember and we give thanks that we have been one with Pastor Johanna this past year, and through the Spirit, we will be united with her wherever she serves. May she recognize her many gifts for ministry given for the building up of this church, and may we recognize our own gifts for ministry that we use here in this place, and especially during this past week as we gather to grow in faith for our outdoor vacation Bible school for our youngest among us. We thank you for this gift and for this ministry and the many who served. And for Pastor Johanna's leadership and strong witness of you, we have grown in your love and grace, and we pray that that same love and grace go with her as we come to this time of saying goodbye. Bless all of our comings and goings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for schools in our communities and around the globe, for educators who must plan for the fall, and for children as they learn in new ways and in traditional ways. May you provide all of the resources so all have access to learning in new modes. Lord, in your mercy. And then finally, a gathering in your presence this day, we are reminded to acknowledge a threshold moment, the completion of another year of internship uh, here for Providence and Grace, and that final time for Pastor Johanna with her and her family. This is a thin place between what's been and what's to be, between what's been studied, learned, and accomplished, and all the more what there is to study and what there is to learn and what there is to do. And it is so very good to mark growth in celebration and then so very good as well to celebrate having further to grow, to note a mile marker on the longer way and to take joy both in the distance traveled and the distance yet ahead. Bless this time and space and those who stand in thresholds like Pastor Johanna, looking back and looking ahead with you and with each of us. May it be with a sense of both gratitude and anticipation. May it be with an awareness of how we grow our lifelong with our whole person, our minds, our bodies, our spirits, and our emotions, and how you help us to grow in all of these things. And may this time be with a profound sense of what it means to place our way where we've been and where we're going within the way of Jesus, your Son. May God's blessing rest on Pastor Johanna and her family and the places and the people that she will encounter with you, most gracious God. May your light shine on her. May your light make her path clear. May your hope carry her through the challenging times. And may gratitude be her response when life is good. And may all of our days be filled with curiosity and adventure. And may we all discover the incomparable joy of living lives that bring honor and glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let us gather in prayer. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now as we move at the conclusion of the service and our, our farewell litany for Pastor Johanna, I want to remind you that we'll be back here next week on our same YouTube channel and also on our Facebook post. So we hope that you'll join us uh, next week for worship here at Grace Lutheran and Providence Valley Lutheran Church in, in Dawson, Minnesota. But also a reminder for those of you who wish to gather in person that our uh, Church services will now alternate between Grace in town and Providence out in the country. So next week we'll be at Providence at 9 o'clock for in-person worship at 9 a.m. And you're welcome to join us using all the safe practice guidelines that are set out. So good to be with you. Let's move into our final litany for Pastor Johan. Now we're just going to take a moment in our online uh, service to uh, bid farewell to our pastor, our intern pastor, uh, Pastor Johanna, and her family. So we'll invite them uh, to come forward now. So uh, Pastor Johanna and Scott and uh, Lydia, if you want to come to the front. And, and just uh, this uh, service we are recording, and I just want to remind uh, the uh, congregation that if you wish to gather with us, we are going to have a little party uh, outside and a farewell gathering uh, outside after worship. So we should be gathering like around 9.45 outside for refreshments uh, this morning. And uh, if you want to stop by, uh, being it will all be outside, uh, maybe you'd feel a little more safe uh, gathering with us. You can even just remain in your car and and wave uh, to the family. But we'll be outside uh, having a little farewell event uh, and roasting them right after this, right after this service. So we're going to do uh, a litany of thanks, which is a more formal occasion of thanking you for your ministry among us this past year and uh, sharing your family with us, your husband Scott and daughter Lydia, um, this past year. Um, it seems like it's gone uh, all too quickly. Um, but uh, we're thankful that uh, we had the uh, time uh, together to, to share in ministry, so we'll uh, do uh, this litany of thanks. So we are, we are all called by God to offer our unique works and gifts, but some are called to lead in very special ways. We are all called by God to speak the truths of faith, but some are called to preach to the community with words of compassion and justice. We are now called to raise our voices in thanks for Pastor Johanna, for she has led us, taught us, learned from us, preached God's word to us, and shared in our suffering and our joy. Your call and her seminary training, prayer, personal preparation, and reflection brought Pastor Johanna to us. For this caring God, we are thankful. And for her countless hours spent caring for us and her faithful work, for this gracious God, we are thankful. And as she has worked and learned among us, now we offer our prayers and support as she enters the final phase to become a duly called and ordained minister of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. That we might continue to hold her up in the spirit through all of her journeys. For your servant, Johanna, we are thankful. Amen. And now, people of God, members and friends of Grace Lutheran and Providence Valley Lutheran Church, do you release Johanna from service as your intern? We, we do, do, and we give thanks, thanks to God for our ministry together. And then, Pastor Johanna, do you recognize and accept the completion 
of your ministry with grace and providence, Lutheran. I do, and I give thanks to God for our ministry together. And then let us pray together. God, whose everlasting love for all is trustworthy, help each of us to trust the future which rests in your care. The time we were together in your name saw our laughter and tears, our hopes and disappointments. Guide us as we hold these cherished memories, but move in new directions until that time to come when we are completely one with you and with each other. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Now, as a keepsake uh, to remember us, we'll uh, offer some presentations uh, to you outside um, at our farewell uh, service. But uh, uh, let us um, pray uh, this, uh, 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 this uh, final uh, prayer for you. And so we'll join once again with, uh, with this prayer of our congregations that you have uh, so faithfully and gracefully served this past year. O oh God, for remembered times when we together have shared the life of faith, we express our sincere gratitude. We thank you for the moments we have shared with Pastor Johanna in worship, in learning, in service, and in Christian living. We pray that she will be aware of your Spirit's guidance as she moves to a new place in the name of Jesus the Savior. Amen. And then as we normally do, the final blessing, we'll ask that you just maybe place your hand up in there, and if you're joining us online, that you would maybe just place your hand on the screen, and then we'll offer the traditional blessing for Pastor Johanna and her family. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Say goodbye, everybody. Bye.